Hi everyone, this is Barb Bruno. I want to welcome all of you to the special webinar that we're doing today. I know that many of you are working from home, you're facing situations you've never faced before. It's a very strange world we're leaving in right now. And so I decided to do this training to basically help you, to really show you how you can effectively work remotely because it's so much different than, than something that most of you have ever done. Working remotely is often not near as much fun and exciting as it sounds. And it isn't as easy as you might have thought. I think everybody wants, I'd love to work remote, but then how do you make the best of working remotely when you're navigating the daily changes occurring to what's going on in the world right now, the COVID-19 virus? So today I want to address the following topics for all of you. How do you basically develop a successful rhythm when you're working from home? How do you nurture your candidates and your clients? What is best use of your time in today's uncertain job market? What are the seven benefits of working remotely? And what are the seven challenges of working remotely? Because there's just as many challenges as there are benefits. I want you to think for a moment about your daily routine before COVID-19. We all operate pretty much on automatic pilot. We often arrive at our office without even remembering our commute. But your new reality has turned off your normal way of doing things, which can be very unsettling to say the least. Life has changed and we're all now not operating in our comfort zones at all. Part of your new normal now includes working remote, you're distancing yourself from people, you've got fear of the unknown. After day one of working home, many individuals with small or school-aged children could not believe it had just been one day of working from home. The day seemed to be very long. And that's why it's important to create a successful rhythm when you're working remote. And this could take you a few days to really, you know, get this, you know, master this, but I wanna walk through how you can do this. None of us can afford to just write this out because there's a three week cycle in what you and I do. There's always been a three week cycle in the staffing and recruiting profession. What you do or don't do this week will impact what you have going three weeks from now. And so what I wanna suggest that you do is take time to plan out your day as if you were in your office. Now, if you've got small children, if you've got school-aged children, and many of them are doing online you know, education right now, you've gotta carve out the hours when you know you have the option of working. And then you've gotta be selfish with those hours and very organized so when you do start working, you know what you're gonna do, you know, and you'll be much more effective. We're all facing such unusual circumstances right now, but there are many things you can do, even if you're in a niche or a segment of our profession that is putting interviews and jobs on hold. And I'll discuss this later in this webinar. It's interesting, I just got a, a, a notice on email that, that Walmart is now hiring 150,000 temporaries worldwide. So obviously if you're in the temporary business, Walmart, is hiring 150,000 temporaries right now because they're going to be setting out outside tents to do the, the virus screening and they need 150,000 people. Amazon announced yesterday that they're hiring 1,000 more to work in warehouses because you know obviously people are ordering things online, they're not going into stores. And so if you're in the temporary business, obviously there's a lot of opportunity right now to do business with some of these companies that, that have an influx. In, our, in the front page of my newspaper this morning, they were asking for 500 people that were willing to stock shelves in grocery stores to just show up at the grocery store this morning at seven. And so again, there is some opportunity, but some of you might be doing direct hire. Maybe you feel that things have come to a screeching halt and I will show you what to do. I suggest that you get up at the same time you normally do and work during the same time slots if possible. You wanna complete your planner at the end of every day. And that's what helps you put that rhythm, um, you know, and, and, and get that rhythm and comfort zone while you're working virtual and you will accomplish more. If you have small children at work, there is no way on God's earth that you can get up at 8.30 and say that you're gonna work till five because you've got children underfoot and especially if they're little, you know, they, you've got things you've got to do with them. But, but put time slots during the day when you know that either they're napping or you can have them working on a project or you can get some things done. Now is the best time for us to nurture our candidate and client relationships. I always um, envision relationships like a plant or like a tree. And when you think of a plant or you think of a tree, they are either growing or dying. 
if they don't get sunlight, if they don't get water, they die. And so I want you to think about your clients and your candidates as a plant or a tree. And if you don't water them or you don't take care of them for two to four weeks, um, that relationship could die off. If you work in the contract or temporary staffing segments of our profession, it's more important than ever that you nurture and keep in touch with everyone you have currently working. Because there are a lot of contractors and temporary workers still out there working. And it's important, you've got to listen to their concerns, you've got to show them you care and that they can trust you to have their best interest at heart. And you've got to be their sounding board. Schools are closed, which has caused many parents to stay at home. And you may have to replace current candidates or consultants due to these unforeseen circumstances, but you've got to be in front of this. We cannot afford to be reactive. You know, now is the time where all of us need to be proactive. And the beautiful part about what you and I do for a living is we're in one of the few professions that all we need is a phone and a computer or a, a tablet or a smartphone, and we're in business. If you're working direct hire and you're experiencing delays in interviewing or hiring or start dates, you must stay in touch with your candidates. You've got to reassure them this is a temporary situation and keep them informed of any changes. Tell them that you're gonna be in touch the minute things open back up and if they have questions. See, them hearing from us um, really puts them at ease because they feel we're workforce workplace experts. And if we start saying, you know, when this turns around, you know, obviously everything's gonna be back on the front burner, but we've gotta be that calm person. We've gotta be that person that makes our candidates and our clients feel comfortable because your, your, can, your clients are also having a lot going on and they're confused and frustrated by this pandemic. And they're also dealing with daily changes in the way business is conducted, you know, in the United States, you know, send them uh, the 20 FAQs that I've attached to your handout. We're gonna send you a recording of this call and a handout. Now the FAQs that I'm sharing with you were accurate information as of yesterday. Um, you know, obviously information is changing rapidly. So I also wanna lead you to two other sites. I want you to get out a pen right now and there's two associations that are doing a great job of keeping their members informed on what's going on with this virus, you know, from a business standpoint and an employment standpoint. One is NAPS, and you can go to naps360.org, and that's the number, NAPS, N-A-P-S, 360.org. Or you could go to TechServe Alliance, and TechServe Alliance is the association that represents IT and engineering, contract and direct, but the information they posted, I was on their site earlier today, is really applicable to everybody and they're opening the information to everyone not just their members they set up a separate site for this and so it's techservalliance.org and then slash services slash coronavirus and so it's tech t-e-c-h serve s-e-r-v-e alliance a-l-l-i-a-n-c-e dot org backslash services s-e-r-v-i-c-e-s backslash coronavirus and so if you go to naps360.org or techservalliance.org backslash services backslash coronavirus, you're going to get some of the latest, greatest information because it's the job of our national associations to keep us informed. And they are, they're doing a great job of it. And so you can also get information from them that you can share with your clients or share with your candidates. You've got to continue to be your client's sounding board, show compassion and concern and let them know you're there if they have any questions. You don't want to call now and say, are you doing any hiring unless you know they're Amazon or they're a company that you know is hiring, like a Walmart or grocery stores. You know, what you want to do is you want to make um, phone calls just saying, I can't even imagine what you're going through right now. Are there any questions I can help you with? I just wanted to do a wellness check and just see how you're doing. I'm here for you. If you need to run something by somebody, if I don't have the answer, I'll get it for you. Because they will remember that during this time, you were just trying to support them and have their back and you weren't making money on them. Because remember, most of our clients feel we view them as a source of revenue because the only time we ever talk to them is when we're making money on them. So you've got an opportunity right now to show them that you care, to show them that you're gonna give them information that may help them. And you're not, you know, do you have an opening? You know, when are you gonna pay my bill? You know, when are we gonna start this person? We've got to call and just do some, I can't even imagine what's going on in your company right now. I've got access to a lot of information. Are there any questions you have? If I don't know the answer, I'll find it out for you. You're positioning yourself as a resource for information. Make sure your clients have your cell phone number. 
if you just need to vent, if you just need to talk to somebody, I'm here for you. You know, and again, they will remember who did this and who was still trying to sell for them. Now let's talk about best use of your time in today's uncertain job market. And this is gonna vary greatly depending on some things. The niche or area specialization. Obviously, if you're in the temporary business, um, you might be busy right now because there's a lot of temporaries being, being hired. If you're doing nurse contractors, physician contractors, you're very busy right now. You know, if you're, if you're doing manufacturing and you're placing with people that are manufacturing parts that are needed for ventilators or masks or things, those companies are changing what they're producing and they're hiring a lot of people. It depends on where you are geographically. California just locked down their state. I found out today I have a, a friend on the uh, town council for Crown Point, which is where my office is in Indiana. And starting tonight, they're going to put out a notice to everybody saying that for the next two weeks, uh, they want us all to be you know, basically in place. So they want you to stay in your home unless you're going grocery shopping, getting a prescription or, um, let's see, it was prescription, grocery store or doctor visit. That's it. Oh, and bank. And so nobody in my town even knows that. And my city even knows that. I only know because my friends on the town council. But, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Things are changing, you know, rapidly. So where you are geographically has a big input. The tenure, the tenure of your team, how, how long have you been there? How long have your coworkers been there? You know, do you have a lot of business that was going? Are you newer? Where now is a good time to, to, you know, really learn this business and sharp tune your skills. And also the 90 to 120 day goals of your company. You've got to ask your owners and your managers, what are we going to try to accomplish in the next 90 to 120 days? If you're a niche where jobs are on the rise, you're going to see an increase in contracts and temporary assignments. Again, Amazon just hired a thousand. Um, you know, uh, it, it, and also companies are hiring additional cleaning staff and the medical profession is all hands on deck. I've heard where a lot of housekeepers because the hotel industry, hospitality is getting clobbered but they're going after the housekeepers to do cleaning in other facilities. And so sometimes people are gonna switch industries. Also, an interesting thing that just came up at the end of last week, um, companies are now hiring hard to find IT contractors. Usually they can't hire these people because they're at such a premium right now. Well, a lot of them, their, their contracts have been cut short. They're put on hold right now. And so all of a sudden you've got other companies swooping in and saying, I'll hire you right now and I'll pay you right now when you can work remote. So you've got to continue to interact with your candidates, your temp workers, your contractors, and your clients. You know, you've got to let them know that you're there, you have their back, you're not selling to them, you're finding out what their situation is, and, and just being becoming that sounding board, and if they still want to do something, if I could find you, a, you know, a job and you could work remote, would you be interested in doing something right now? And then if, you're, if your clients are not hiring certain contractors, certain IT contractors remote, let them know that other companies are starting to do that because they can get the talent now. And when things when things come back, they're going to come back. It's going to be like a like a, a tidal wave because companies need to get things done. And then these people are not going to be available. So it's a way to swoop in and get some of this hard to find talent right now. And when everybody wants them, they'll already be working for your client. On the other side of the spectrum are companies who have put a hold on hiring. Okay. Um, and they've temporarily closed or they've made the decision, you know, um, I'm sorry, I missed one point here. You've also got to continue, I'm sorry, to interact again on, on a daily basis. On the other side are companies who have put things on hold. They've temporarily closed their business or they've made the decision that they're going 100% virtual. Most companies have not canceled their job orders, but they're delaying interviews and start dates and, and they've changed target dates to hire. You know, and again, no one knows. If you try to pin somebody down right now, they're probably going to tell you, I don't know. I mean, that's the answer we're getting from a lot of people, but you at least want to become their sounding board and be interacting with them. If you're experiencing delays and cancellations, you've got to remain calm and understand that this is a temporary situation and you've got to reassure your candidates and your clients. You know, all you have to do is observe what happened in China and Korea. And the outbreak does peak, and it hasn't peaked in our country yet. So it's going to get worse before it gets better. But we're better prepared, and we shut our borders much quicker than anyone else. So I don't know how bad it's going to get. I have no idea. But it does reduce in time. You can just look at other countries where it's been, and it does reduce in time. But you've got to be that calm person. And do me a favor. Please turn off the news. You cannot sit there and try to work 
or sit there with your family. Number one, if you have kids, you're going to scare them to death because all they're going to hear about are deaths and cases and all this craziness that's going on right now. And it doesn't do you any good. If you want to switch the news on once a day at 10 o'clock at night and see updates, that's great. But you can't watch it all day long because what you're going to want to do is roll up in a ball in one of your closets and not do anything because it's scary, you know, and so much of the news is sensational and it's over and over and over and over again, you know, and I opened my email this morning and I think I had 200 and some odd email and I think 195 of them started out with coronavirus. And so I deleted them all because I'm at the point now where I've got to stay calm. And that's the reason I'm doing training for you today is because I will continue doing training. If I see something else that I can help you with, I'm offering this free to everybody because I've had virtual teams, I've managed virtual teams, I've worked virtual, you know? And so I'm telling you that right now you've got to remain calm, but realize you can get things done. If you're in a niche where clients continue to hire, I want you to do a couple things. First of all, I want you to look at your situation at home and be honest with your owner or manager. If you have small children or school-aged children, you will have more distractions and obligations. I love this picture. This picture just made me laugh because I've had that reality, you know, in, in one point in my life. I so remember those days. You want to commit to a specific numbers of hours each day that you can work and set set realistic minimum standards of performance that, that you and your manager agree to. And if you're not able to complete something you're supposed to do, then reach out to your manager and just be honest with them. Communicate during this time. You should be talking to your manager every single day, every single day. You know, and if you need help, ask them for help. If your clients are putting everything on hold, it may be time for you to do some other things because there are clients that are putting everything on hold right now. So is this the time where you master and learn how to utilize your ATS? Most recruiters and account executives don't use 10% of their ATS. And almost every ATS company has online training where you can learn how to use your ATS better. Why don't you catch up on all the data that you've not entered into your ATS? Why don't you update all your client information? You should have prep information on every client that you got from prior debriefs. And so now is the time where you could really get organized. We've been so busy that I think we've all kind of felt like a hamster on a wheel where we go into work, there's so much business we can't breathe. And so we're always complaining. We don't have time to do certain things. Well, now you have some time to do some of those things. You also need to position yourself as a workforce workplace expert. Shared data on the COVID-19 with your client. Now I've attached 20 FAQs that were current as of yesterday, you know, but again, changes are happening again today. Fine tune your listening skills and become your client's sounding board. Understand delays and set up mutual agreed upon follow-up dates. When you first reach out to clients, I wouldn't even try to get a follow-up date. I would just see how they are. Do a wellness check, let them know you care. Then the next time you follow up with them say, you know, what? when is a good time for me to reach back out to you? Send them a card just saying, I can't even imagine what you're going through right now. This is a great time to send cards to clients and candidates. Continue to share any information that's going to benefit your clients and your candidates. There is some positive information out there, and I think we need to start sharing it because it sure isn't on the TV channels, but it is in some of the news. So, so go with facts and try to share some positive facts with your candidates and clients. This is the ideal time to pipeline candidates. What you have to do is you have to look at what jobs does your office fill? What are the titles that when they come in, you know you're gonna fill them? Most companies make the majority of their revenue from under 10 titles. And so what are the titles that, that you write jobs or contracts or temp assignments all the time for? Now is the time to pipeline candidates because guess what? Many are working from home and they can talk openly. And they're going to continue to change jobs in the future. And many of them, because of what's going on in our world right now, everybody's doing this. You're just reevaluating your priorities because it's just a very strange time for everybody. Well, one of the things they're going to think about is their job. Once this is behind us, there will continue to be a lack of talent. So now is the time to pipeline. Now is the time. And when your candidates hear from you, and you've got to say things like, this is a temporary situation because I knew you were home. I just wanted to update that I know everything that's important to you. What you see is your next career move. So when this all opens up, I'll know when to pick up the phone and call you. That's a great phone call to make. And candidates and clients are going to remember who called them during this time. They are going to remember that. You also want to conduct research and learn to, to utilize free sourcing tools. I don't have any paid resources in my company, none. 
and I always hear from recruiters in the company, you know, we need more paid resources. There are so many free resources. Why not identify them and learn how to use them now? And then research, who are the best clients that you should be targeting? Whether you're a recruiter or an account executive, you should have Google alerts set up on all your clients and all your prospective clients and on your contact in each client. If you don't know how to set up a Google alert, go to Google and say, how do I set up a Google alert? Um, and all, what a Google alert does is say that I set, I set up um, the Hyatt Hotel as one of my clients. Well, anytime anything is published about the Hyatt Hotel um, online, I'm gonna get an alert. And so because the Hyatt is such a big company, I could have 10 alerts a day or even more. And so when you set up a Google alert, you then set up a rule in your email provider that that goes into the Hyatt folder. So you right click on the first Google alert that comes in and you set up a rule that anytime this comes, any Google alert comes from Hyatt, it automatically goes into the folder. What's great about this is that before you call your client or before you call your prospect, you open that folder to see what are the latest, greatest things that are being said about them. You know, and there's a lot of information on companies right now. What are they doing through this crisis? You're going to know it if you set up Google Alerts. And Google Alerts also give you triggers for hiring. And so if you haven't done this, if you haven't set up Google Alerts for every one of your current clients and every prospect you have, and again, if, if you need to land more clients, now is the time to really do your research. Who, who is very much like the best clients you have? Identify other companies that are similar to your best clients. So when this is behind us, you're prepared to reach out. You've got Google Alerts set up, you know everything about them, they're entered into your ATS system, and you're ready to roll. Also, there are so many new sourcing to tools and Chrome extensions. One Chrome extension that is fun is Crystal Notes. I don't know if you're using this. You can only do so many before it's a paid service, but I was at a conference once, and I had um, Todd Bosler get up in front of an audience, and he said, are you, are, do you, are you using Crystal Nose? And none of us were, this was several years ago. And he said, well, let's see what Crystal knows about somebody that you all know. And next thing I know, he had my LinkedIn profile pulled up in front of a convention. And I'm sitting in a chair going, oh my God, what is he gonna do? So I stood up and I said, I don't know Crystal. I don't know what she knows, but I don't know Crystal. And he said, well, Barb, let's see what she knows about you. And so he, he you know, put my name into the, to the Chrome extension. And all of a sudden it said things like, don't address me formally, call me Barb or call me Barbara, but don't call me Mrs. Bruno. Um, if you can make me laugh, that's what I would prefer. I prefer to keep things really light. Um, I don't deal well in gray. I'm pretty black and white. And so, you know, don't deal a lot in gray and don't give me the editorial, give me the cliff notes. And if you send me an email, I will only read bullets. And I have to tell you, after he did this, everybody sitting around me goes, oh my God, that's you. Like that so describes you. So he goes, so what do you think about Crystal now? And I said, well, I found her very creepy but I'm gonna use her. And I came back and I did a profile on everyone in my office and they were spot on. Imagine if you knew how to approach clients because you did a crystal nose on, on, on potential clients. It, it, what it does is it generates a mini disc profile. Now you can only do so many free in a day, you know, so you don't wanna overuse this, but it's a great tool to learn things about. And there's so many other tools. You know, one is socialtalent.com. And this is a great tool because what it does is it actually helps you write a complete Boolean search for your titles with all the synonyms. And so if you don't know how to do a Boolean search and you've left that up to the sourcers and you want to learn how to do it, go to socialtalent.com. And the S in social and the T in talent is capitalized. Um, and it's, again, it builds out a complete Boolean search for you. Or do, are you aware of zapinfo.io? That's a Chrome extension that can take contacts from nearly any page. It grabs all the contacts you pull up from a search result. Okay, or what about, I'm trying to think of other ones. Again, Crystal Knows is a great one. Another one would be um, if you're just looking for, for contact information, truepeoplesearch.com is a great tool, or usphonebook.com. You know, another one, another good Chrome extension is Lucia, L-U-S-H-A. They've got freed and pay versions. Obviously, they're only gonna use the free versions, but Ask your candidates what they use when they're looking for a job and really go out there and start identifying some of the other resources. Now is the time to educate yourself too and get better at your job. You wanna fine tune the way you're doing things. If you've used the same resources all the time, use this time to identify a new source once a week. 
make a goal right now that every week I'm going to expand my network by 50 people and I'm going to identify one or two new resources for candidates or for clients. Or I'm going to find some Chrome extensions that are going to make me money. This is a great time to do this. So when you go back to work, you're going to be head and shoulders above where you are right now. Now let's discuss the benefits of working remotely and some of them are obvious. You know, obviously there's no commute. Um, you don't have to get dressed. You could stay in your pajamas all day if you wanted to. You can work at your own pace as long as you get your work done. It's a quiet environment. That's unless you have kids or pets. Um, you've got flexibility because you can start early in the morning or work later in the evening. If you're a morning person, an evening person, you know, it, it, you're, 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 you've got a little more flexibility. There is a lack of structure, which allows you to work when it's best for you. Um, you could take a walk or exercise or do what you want, but then get your work done. It's less expensive because there's no commute, no parking, no daycare. You're not paying for, well, you're paying for lunch, but it's coming out of your refrigerator. Now let's talk about the challenges of working remote. It's isolating. You don't have that interaction you're used to. You didn't sign up for a remote job. And this got, you know, this got put on a lot of us pretty quickly. Children, pets can be major distractions. Email or text can be, be mis, misinterpreted. You know, and I love when, when texting, you know, corrects itself. You can send some pretty bizarre things unless you're really watching what you're doing. But you don't want to only email with your coworkers and your manager because too often you think you're saying something and they're reading into it. And email can so often be mis, misinterpreted. So when you're in doubt, over communicate. Pick up your phone and talk to your coworkers and talk to your manager. Don't only correspond with your manager and your coworkers by email and text. I'm telling you, you won't get near as much done. You may be unable to meet deadlines or hit minimum standards of performance on certain days, but then what you have to do is then you've got to look at your next day and plan out what's most important. What I would say to each of you right now, if you're not a planner, at least every night, like tonight, before you stop working, just write the six things that are top priorities for you to get done tomorrow when it comes to your job. What are six things you commit to getting done tomorrow? And then plan at least 10 outgoing contacts. Those six things you're gonna get done in 10 outgoing contacts. If you do nothing more than that, you're gonna, you're gonna keep yourself on track. You need to participate on daily calls to stay informed. You know, hopefully you know, you're, you're corresponding back and forth with your manager. You need to know what's going on. And the other thing is you've also, you're unable to bounce ideas off your coworkers or your boss. So again, pick up the phone and, and bounce ideas off. And there's so many distractions if you've never worked from home. I worked from home once when my husband got very ill and I probably shouldn't even share the story with you, but I'm going to because I'm a very disciplined person and I'm very organized. And one morning I made myself a cup of tea and I was gonna go to my office and I saw the bananas were getting ripe. And so I don't know why I did this, but I decided to make banana bread because I saw there were ripe bananas. Now I'm supposed to be working, okay? And I made banana bread and I don't think I got to my desk till like 9.30. And when I realized what I had done, I'm like, oh my God, like I wasn't even watching the clock. I just thought I'm gonna make banana bread. And then I would walk by a closet and think, God, I haven't cleaned that in a year. I think I should clean that closet, you know, or it, it, there were just so many distractions that I really had to start disciplining myself. I realized I had to get up, I had to get dressed. I had to dress like I was going to work. I had to shut the door and, and not allow myself out where the distractions were. You know, and at that point I hired someone to help me with the kids because I could not, I, I just could not have all those distractions. The other thing I did that I, again, this was just, you know, and I'm sharing it with you because you're gonna face some of these challenges. I discovered Ellen. I, I'm not a TV watcher, but I, her show was on one day when I was eating lunch late. And all of a sudden for the next three days at two o'clock, I sat there and watched the Ellen show for an hour from two to three in the middle of prime time. And after a week at home, I looked at my husband and I said, me working at home is going to cost us so much money that I'm going to hire a registered nurse and I'm going back to my office. I hope you don't mind, but I can't. I, I can't do this. Now, I'm forced to do it right now. I'm much better at it right now. And I've managed to work virtual since then. But I had to learn some lessons, you know, that I had to really segment hours of time and, and make sure that all the distractions were there. And if you and your spouse or you and your partner are both at home working and you've got children, then take time. Who's going to watch the children so I can work? And then when you're working, I'm going to watch the kids and let the dog out. I mean, you've got, you've got to share the load. Or if you have older children that are not in school right now, they have to be able to help you. This is a time when kids can learn that they've got a role in the family as well. There is something else that's really, really important for you all to remember. Your company is in business to generate profits. Your owner, as well as you, 
may have lost a ton of money in the stock market. And just like, you know, it, and just like this unforeseen situation is delaying hiring. And so it's also delaying revenue and profits. And what you have to understand is something that it's so important that you establish trust and communication and professionalism with your employer while you're working virtual. You don't want them to feel you're taking advantage of them. You want to let them know that that you're still you still have their back. You're still a, you know you're still there trying to keep the momentum going. Or even if you're you're just learning your ATS or you're fine tuning a skill set or, or you know if, if you find a new resource, send it to you. I just found a resource for candidates. We might want to tell everybody about this. It's great. Let them know you know and also keep your sense of humor intact. You know you you could spend it you know you could spend the next you know few weeks rolled up in a ball crying or you could, you know, be grateful for what you've got right now and smile. And, and we sort of have to laugh at this a little bit, you know, and, and find some humor in things. The situation is not funny at all, but there are things that happen. Laugh when your kids do silly things. Be willing to, to laugh when someone sends you a joke. We've got to keep our sense of humor intact. Let's talk about trust with your company. This is important whether you're working in an office or virtual. You've got to understand what's expected of you and complete your work daily. If your work is currently does not generate revenue, but sets you up to jumpstart your production when you get back to the office, that is working smart. If you don't have the support you need to succeed, you gotta communicate that to your employer. So you both are satisfied with your results. Point blank, ask your manager, you know, what, what would you like me to do during this period of time? How can I best help our company? And then give them some ideas that you might have. You might take some of your ideas from this, but you've gotta agree with them on what they expect you to get done during this period of time. And then you gotta communicate. Confirm expectations and deadlines and when calls and meetings are scheduled so you're present. If you're having problems, reach out early so you can focus on solutions versus dwelling on any problems and be willing to video conference or Skype so you can interact online with your manager or coworkers or clients or candidates. Use all forms of communication, including direct mail, as long as you put personal and confidential in the lower left-hand corner of an envelope and don't have your company name and the return address and somebody will open it. And there are so many amazing tools out there to communicate. You've got Skype, you've got FaceTime, Google Hangouts, a video conferencing. This all makes working remote much easier, but technology does not replace the communication between human beings that are working toward a common goal. Pick up the phone and have conversations. Send out regular status updates to keep your manager and your coworkers informed and don't hesitate to ask for help or guidance. Not only is this going to help your virtual team dynamic, it's going to show your boss you're still getting things done. Next, you want to maintain your professionalism. Now, by professionalism, I don't mean that you have to get dressed for work every day, but you want to set up a workplace separate from your living space to eliminate distractions and give you an appropriate place for communicating. Stick to your work routine as much as possible. Get up, get dressed, and get things done. Explain to your family that there's certain times when you can't be interrupted if they're old enough and have others pitch in again to help younger children and pets. You're home, but you're also working and you must find a balance that works for you and your other obligations. And this could change daily, depending on you know, the age of your children and the needs and, and what they wanna do. Sometimes you know, teenagers and kids in, in uh, middle school can be a bigger pain in the neck than a toddler can be. When you walk into that room, you pretend you're walking into your office. There should be no TV or other distractions. Do not listen to the news. You know, and again, you've got to tell those older children when you're there, they're, you're, they're not to be interrupted. You are not to be interrupted. Lastly, let's address your personality and sense of humor. We're all operating out of our comfort zone and no one, including me, has a crystal ball to predict what's going to happen even tomorrow. But rather than cry, laugh. Rather than worry, do. You've got to become that voice of calm and reason that everyone needs, including you. So that's my program for today. Um, we are recording this call. I am going to get the recording to you. Our tech team is also working remote. So I don't know if they're gonna get the recording to me today. It might be Monday, but I'm gonna get the recording to you with the handout. So you've got all this information, but we're all in this together. And you know, the one thing you've got to keep telling yourself is this is just a delay. You know, nobody's saying no to you. They're just saying not now. You know, they're just, everybody's on a little bit of delay. Your life is on a little bit of a delay right now, but keep the momentum going so that when everything does come back, it's gonna come back very fast. And if you don't do these things now, you're gonna regret it when business comes back and, it, and it's gonna feel like a tidal wave. So now is the time to prepare. Now is the time 
to come up with things that are going to help you be better when the economy bounces back and we're all back at work safe and sound. So now what I want to do is open it for any questions that any of you have. You can ask me questions one of two ways. Look at the control panel on your right. And if you called in with a telephone number, an access code, and a PIN number, you can go uh, where the attendee list is, click on the attendee list, and you see a question mark. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, a hand that looks like it's being raised. The hand will let me unmute your lines and you and I can talk. The question mark will take you down to the questions on the control panel and the gray bars on the bottom. And if you have any questions, you can type it in there. If you don't want me to say your first name, then, then just put anonymous or confidential before you type in your question. So let me see if any of you have any hands up. I see no hands up, but I do see some questions. So let me go below to the questions. Hold on one second here. Let's see. Okay. Regarding the web address, is it a forward slash or a backslash? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, for TechServe Alliance, it was techserveralliance.org backslash services backslash coronavirus. NAPS was NAPS the number 360.org. Um, and I'm glad you're a computer geek, Christine, because you saw I just said, you know, slash, slash. I didn't say backslash, forward slash. It is a backslash. So thank you for being a computer geek. And you know what, Christine? I love that you asked that question because when you ask me questions, you're helping everybody on this line. We have hundreds of people on this phone call. And we're all in this together. And I'm thrilled to see that you're doing this. And by the way, if I see something Oh, it's not a backslash. Wait, it, it is not a backslash. It is a forward slash. Okay, so it's a forward slash. Let's see, wait. You're right, it is a forward slash. Oh my God. TechServalliance.org forward slash services forward slash coronavirus. So now you know I'm not a geek, right, Christine? Sorry about that. Um, what I want to say to all of you is as I see things happening, and if I think there's any other information that all of you need, you know, watch, watch for my email because if I think it's necessary to do some more training for you in a week or two free. To just help you through this, I will. You know, I'm going to still, and, and if any of you have our training products, I'm going to still be doing our weekly calls. I'm going to keep doing coaching calls where you can ask me questions. I'm going to still be here to help you through this time because I think that that's necessary to do that. So, or if you have anything that you feel you need, if, if you have something that that you feel you really need, send it to support at staffingandrecruiting.com. That's my support line. And if there's some training you need or some information as we're going through this together that you really feel everybody can use, if you send it to me, I'll create a webinar around it. So I'm going to kind of take my direction from all of you. When you feel you need something or if there's something you need, just send the idea to support at staffingandrecruiting.com and I'll try to customize training around what you want. Because trust me, if you want something, um, other people are going to want something too. They probably just didn't ask me for it. Okay, I have a bunch of you thanking me for this. The only thank you that I want out of this is I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to realize that we're not drowning. We're just on a little island right now. And I'm trying to send you a little bit of a life, life preserver. And we're all going to be fine. Build your networks now. Learn your ATS. Reach out to those candidates. You know, really solidify your candidate and client relationships. Now is a great time to send cards to people because everybody's just a little bit scared to get on the phone and talk to them. You know, this is the time to do that. So I appreciate all the gratitude I'm saying, but, but again, the only gratitude is use some of the ideas. And I hope that this has put your minds a little bit more at ease. It is a very strange time out there. So please follow the rules, stay safe, you know, make smart decisions, um, but keep educating yourself, keep getting better at this job, because when it comes back, it's going to be like a tidal wave. And so get all the things done. So when it does come back, you don't have to play catch up. You've been proactive during this period of time and you're ready to roll because you've been pipelining and you've been doing all kinds of things during this period of time. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, I appreciate you being here. And, uh, you know, again, if I have another call, I'll make sure I get emails out there and let you all know about it. So have a good, safe day, everybody. Thanks.